My name is Kelly Poffel, Technical Manager for Invino Engineering, LLC, located in Tampa, Florida. We're a domestic and international company focused on steam system engineering and designs. Today I want to talk about steam valve internal leakage detection and testing methods. This is part one of a series. And today I want to go through the type of equipment used for testing steam valves. Steam valve uh, testing. Steam valves installed in plants, you know, create a perplexing problem because it's difficult to tell if the valve is leaking through with conventional methods. Uh, it's difficult to analyze and it really costs plants millions of dollars. So, you know, this valve leaking through, we don't know if this valve is leaking through or this valve is leaking through and we end up shutting down part of the production or the whole plant to fix steam valves. The steam valve testing by temperature, the thing with temperature is, if we take a temperature here, it's 100 PSI, it's gonna be 338 degrees Fahrenheit. The thing with temperature, the temperature is transmitted through the valve and back on this side of the valve, it could be 280 degrees Fahrenheit and the valve is seated. Or it could be 280 degrees and the valve is leaking through. So profiling by temperature is very difficult to do. Therefore, we tend to use high frequency ultrasound and high frequency ultrasound is like riding a bicycle. The more you use it, the more proficient you get with this. In segment two, we'll go through and talk about testing points on the valves, where the tests, the different readings that you're going to get. And from the readings, you can determine if the valve is leaking through or not. It's really the most reliable test method. And, you know, ultra high frequency ultrasound, you know, we want to look at frequencies above 25 kilohertz, which is above the human um, uh, threshold of hearing. The test method has many advantages and it also has disadvantages and it's un more important to understand the disadvantages and work around that. But it's been proven to be an easy and accurate test method and for about 98% of the applications that we find in steam valves. So it's highly accurate, it's fast and easy. Today, the high frequency ultrasounds are, are um, electronic versus the, or digital versus the old analog units. The other thing is, is that the information can be displayed and this is a simple uh, unit of the different units that are, are produced today for high frequency ultrasound which the other units even give you more information. So technology has really improved for testing valves. The thing about it is, is, you know, one of the things with high frequency ultrasound is blocking out competing high frequency ultrasounds in the system. Uh, you know, for coming down here and testing this valve versus this valve, the thing is, is that we can block out the ultrasound that might be high frequency ultrasound that might be generated with this valve here. And then we can get an accurate test on this valve here. So the thing is, is that going through an SOP, standard operating procedure for testing valves, then the person can get very accurate with testing steam valves for internal leakage. Like I said, it's fast and easy, highly accurate, can detect many other defects in the system. So it's used for testing steam traps, finding air leaks, vacuum leaks. Always with any tool, training is required. The thing with training is, you know, when you started to learn how to ride a bicycle, somebody trained you, give you guidance how to get onto the bicycle and start to pedal. The more experience you get with it, it gives you a higher accuracy and it's the same thing as riding a bicycle. The more you use it, the more proficient you get with it. And that's the same thing with high frequency ultrasound.
A little bit on the technology is that anything passing through a leak point will have a turbulent flow. So steam passing through a valve that's closed and that's a steam passing through the valve seat and the device that's closing, which is a cage, globe, gate, or ball, that steam passing through that restriction will generate a turbulent flow. This turbulent flow will generate a high frequency uh, ultrasound, which this unit will pick up. Now, how to adjust the instrument for testing? You know, the thing is, is that you can adjust the sensitivity. And the thing with sensitivity, it's not volume, it's sensitivity. So the thing is, is that the higher number the detects lower sound levels. So as you go up in the numbers, the more sensitive you'll get, the, that you'll make the unit. The thing is, is understand that because when we get into part two, we'll talk about baselining you know, the valve to determine if it's leaking through or not. And it'll show you how to set that up. But anyway, the thing is, is that we wanna look at typically around 40 kilohertz. And some people use 25 kilohertz, uh, other people use 40. It's really up to your preference where you get the best clarity for the valve that you're testing. So I guess what we're saying is you have options with it, but it's for the person going up to the valve, start at 40, you don't like the clarity, you can go to 25. The thing with valves is who, you know, how to get started. How do we get started? You know, you know let's select testing team members. You know, typically two people is better than one. Then you can go out and you'll have a person to write information down and the other person um, to do the testing. Select the correct equipment. When you go out like to do anything, you know, always have the correct equipment. As I said before, uh, training. The thing about it is, is any testing determine the data collection process. And the other thing is priority for testing the valves. And anything else is correction roadmap. You know, where's the roadmap? Which are the higher priorities, the lower priority valves? And of course, after the new valves are installed or, or corrections have been made, validation, a very critical part of it. Steam valve types, uh, there's three major ones that we use in steam system. Probably one of the big one is isolation valves that are used throughout the the steam system for you know isolating segments, isolating valving. The next one is control valves. Uh, and again, we control the steam for pressure reduction or temperature control. And other types can be warm up valve and safety valves. Uh, so those are, are the three major areas. So isolation, probably the most dominant uh, steam valve out there, but we also have control valves and other uh, types of valves that are used. Our website right here, uh, all the technical papers are up there. There's right now, I believe, almost 70 technical papers plus articles and videos on a multitude of different things regarding STEAM systems uh, for your reference and use. Um, a little bit on our company, we have short-term and long-term impacts. We do, we do STEAM system engineering assessments, STEAM system reliability, engineering training, um, implementation for engineering, project design, project management. So, uh, contact information, you know, you can contact me or contact Graham, um, or come to our website and use the contact to any of our people in our office. And the last is thank you for your time. And if we can be a service, we would love to have a great day.